My name is Paul Bon, and I've been a GP in this practice at Dollar Health Centre in Forth Valley for almost 20 years. And during that time I've supported many people who've had a cancer diagnosis. The good news is that cancer outcomes are improving and many people are living much longer, fuller lives after their cancer diagnosis. However, cancer recurrence or complications can occur many years after the initial diagnosis. And so it's important that GPs like me are aware of this and tuned into that possibility. Having good information about the cancer treatment helps us to do that. Often I need to trawl through dozens of clinic letters or hospital correspondence to be able to get a complete picture of what's happened to my patient in the past. And it can take quite a while to flick through the, the different bits of information to pick out the relevant information relating to cancer. And often important things such as the treatment intent or the prognosis can be missing. That's where the Macmillan T-Sum is really useful. It is a summary of the treatment that the patient has had in one concise, easy to read document. It contains information about the diagnosis, about the tumour staging, about the cell type. It also has useful information about any surgery, chemotherapy or radiotherapy that the patient has undertaken. And most importantly, it has information about the risk of recurrence or any complications that the patient may have, along with what they should do and any follow-up that is planned. So during a busy GP surgery, I'll spend about 20 seconds having a look at the T-sum before I call my patient through. And it gives me just a quick overview of their diagnosis, their treatment and any surveillance. One thing that's really useful is that patients will have a copy of their treatment summary. That's really helpful for me because it allows me to know what they've been told and it's a great starting point from which we can base any conversations. It helps me to have a much better, richer consultation with the patients. Unfortunately, not all patients with cancer have a treatment summary. And I hope that in the future it will become standard practice for everyone with cancer. My name is Suzanne Miller and I work within NHS Forth Valley's eHealth ICT department and I was the project manager for the Cancer Treatment Summaries project. So as part of the overall project management I worked alongside an IT developer to actually build the system. We took initial requirements and as users interacted with the system and tested it and fed back, we used that feedback to further develop the system. Okay, so I'm just opening this up and this is for a fictitious patient. This particular patient has been assigned to gynaecology and one of the features of the system is that the symptoms which the user is presented with are dependent on the organ that has been selected. So this patient has the organ selected as endometrial and the symptoms for endometrial cancers are displayed. If this is changed to ovarian, the symptoms change and these are the specific symptoms for ovarian cancer. When the treatment summary is ready to be sent to the GP, the user sends it electronically and when they're ready to send it, the to field is already pre-populated with the clinical email address of the practice. This is so the user doesn't have to search for the correct GP information. So when the treatment summary is ready to be sent, the user will then click send and the user will be presented with a dialog box to show that the cancer treatment summary has been sent successfully. The system also provides the ability for the user to see how many cancer treatment summaries the patient has had done and this gives immediate visibility of past treatment summaries which have been sent. I'm Jennifer Wilson. I'm a Macmillan lung cancer nurse in NHS Fort Valley and I've worked in lung cancer for about the last 10 years. 
We have many newer developments along the lines of oral treatments, but the majority of patients still get conventional chemotherapy, that's drip chemotherapy, um, and with that can come some complications. Um, so we try and tell the patient and the carer and the GP what those long-term complications might be. The treatment summary allows us to focus our consultation and actually it doesn't add any additional time to the consultation, actually it structures it in and, and a bit better way because we can go through the process from beginning to end with the patient, going over information that they may have forgotten or may not have picked up in those early stages. Um, I found getting the end of treatment handed to me and knowing that my GP had one, it also means I can refer back if I have any symptoms that worry me. I can refer to it first before I can hit the panic button. So actually it means that you can go back over their diagnosis, what treatment they've had, what complications might arise and how they can re-refer back into the service. So it gives them a little bit of control over their own health and well-being. We've only had positive feedback from the patient. It, you know, they like going away with a piece of paper with their information on it and being part of that.